Hey everybody, welcome back to GR Research. We're not doing an upgrade video today. Today we're talking about power cables, our power cables. So of course I've got the non-flat shirt on. I know I'm going to catch um, a lot of flack from the flat earthers out there. There's going to be a whole group of guys that are going to respond to this thread and post 90% of the posts uh, talking about how power cables and all this stuff doesn't matter and they're panties are all going to be in a wad and they're going to be all upset because I'm talking about power cables. Those are the guys who should probably find another hobby because they're just kind of stuck here and they're kind of party poopers for everybody else. And that's kind of sad. And I love having those guys over because it's so fun watching their whole belief system just crumble as we switch out different cables. It's so much fun. So this one is an introductory video to our new power cable. It's the new B24 power cable. Um, it's the second of the models that we've offered. We've been selling now for several months. The B16, which is a 16 wire braid. It uses our ends that we're using now. These things are working out great. And we've been sending these things out. 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, it's not an expensive power cord. I think they start at 249 uh, for a four foot pair and then prices go up depending on the length and the deal was and still is 30 day free trial in other words if you don't like what it does within 30 days send it back we'll give you your money back no problems uh, no issues and I've had guys that have returned them I've had guys that have dropped them into systems where um, they don't notice much difference and if you have a room that is untreated and you've got a pair of speakers sitting right up against the wall and you've got a budget level system, just dropping one power cable in is kind of like taking a big glass of dirty water and then we're just going to filter a tablespoon of it and you're still drinking a glass of dirty water. It, it can't fix everything in the system. But if you've got a higher quality system, you're, you're, you're moving up that chain. You've got... Decent speakers. They're out away from the walls. You've got some treatment. You're starting to hear soundstage, imaging, layering, things like that. Then the power cables and all the other little tweaks really start coming into play. And I've got a lot of guys who have ordered these things. And then they've ordered more of them. And then they've ordered more of them. I mean, we've got a lot of orders from reorders. So thank you, everyone, who's been giving them a try. I appreciate that. Um... And I've had some return from guys that are comparing them against six and eight thousand dollar power cables in really high end systems. And I've gotten really good feedback from those guys that they really, really liked them and that they were great and beyond their value for what you know for what we're selling them for. But it didn't outperform whatever they were using in their system. And power cables, like every other cable in the system, is somewhat system dependent. There's no one size fits all or one best power cable for each application. Each one of these is a certain amount of filtering going on. And now the new B24, 24 wire braided cable. It's a lot heavier cable. It's a lower gauge cable. It's got copper shielding cups on both ends. And that's all part of the recipe. It lowers the noise a little more than the B16 cable. So it's a little bit more of a filter. And we've noticed even here uh, a few weeks ago, we had the Holo May DAC, which is a really high quality DAC. And we were trying different power cords on it. And we had a guy that came with a really expensive power cable. I'm not going to say the name of the company, but it was really nice. And I'm sure it was probably in the $6,000 range. And we still preferred the B24 cable over that cable in this system. Uh, with that cable, it, there was so much filtering going on with it that it really softened the sound. It really got into the top end and, and kind of took away some of those spatial cues there. Uh, whereas the B24 left that intact, lowered the noise, but it left the imaging and everything there. So I thought, well, let's try and plugged into the wall. And plugged into the wall, that expensive power cable was too bright, too forward, too in your face. When we plugged it into the Uber bus, it was a little too soft in the way it sounded. Um, so it, it all depends on how much stuff you're using, how much filtering is going on. 
with the B24, it loves in, working in conjunction with the Uber bus. Sounds fantastic. I mean, balanced, clean, low noise. Uh, I think everybody's going to really love it. This is more expensive to make. There's a lot more labor involved in putting it together, and there's some of these tweaks that we're doing that add up a little more in cost. It's going to be $100 more than the B16 cable across the board, length for length. So same situation. You get an opportunity to try it and decide if you like it or not. And it does take some time to burn in. I know those guys who are the flat earthers, they're going to say, cables don't burn in. But uh, the fact is they really do. It takes quite a bit of time, and these take about 200 hours. So just plug them in, put some time on them, let them settle in, and then do some A-B comparison, and let us know what you think. I think you guys will really be impressed. Oh, and I've got quite a few guys asking, where's the best place to put these cables? Should I try them on my amps first since it's a heavier gauge? Should I try the heavier gauge on the amp, try the lighter gauge on the front end? No. It makes a bigger difference to drop that noise floor down right at your source, right at your front end. Whatever the first thing is that's getting power to the signal. If it's your your um, uh, transport, maybe your computer, your DAC, those are your places to really start with the power cables, then your preamp, and then your amps. And try it at each position and figure out what it's really doing and how much it's affecting it in each of those positions. And then keep in mind it's a cumulative effect. If it made a lot of difference on your DAC, a little bit of difference on your preamp, and it made some difference on your amp, you start adding up that stuff, and it's no longer a subtle difference. It's a really big difference. So you may contact us and want to order more of these things after you've had one and burned it in and you've listened and compared. But don't ask me where's the best place is to put it. Figure it out. Listen for yourself. Try it in different locations and figure out where does it make the most difference? And for some of you guys who are, who are moving up the ladder now, you're getting into some good speakers, better room, you're going to start noticing this stuff, and it's time to start trying it. And if it doesn't work for you, if you're not hearing anything, not a problem. Just send it back. Easy as that. Couldn't be any simpler. That's it for this little episode. You'll see these on the website. And hit the subscribe button, please, and hit the little bell notification button so you'll know when new videos drop. And I really appreciate you guys watching all the videos, love the support, and I'm glad you guys are tuning in and going along for the journey as we kind of help you move along to higher quality listening. That's it for this series, or this episode. See you guys in the next one.